uh, Nazi Germany, the CIA, and the Dawn of the Psychedelic Age by Norman Oler. Uh, he's the New York Times bestselling author of Blitzed. And, uh, and he's with us. Norman uh, is a novelist, screenwriter, and journalist based in Berlin, Germany. He's author of this new book, Tripped, Nazi Germany, the CIA, and the Dawn of the Psychedelic Age. Norman, uh, O-H-L-E-R dot D-E is his website. And it's uh, Norman, O-H-L-E-R on, on Twitter. Uh, Norman, welcome to the program. What, what got you started on this book? Uh, I'm, hi, I'm very happy to talk about uh, these ideas that, that these ideas that I tried to you know research for me uh, the book started at home with my family um, I had read a white paper of an American startup called Elusis. They claimed that microdosed LSD would be good against Alzheimer because microdosed LSD would stimulate the very same receptors that Alzheimer degenerates and I discussed this with my mother who suffers from Alzheimer at, a, at an earlier stage back then when we started and with my father who had been a judge uh, in Germany, um, quite a high judge, actually, not a drug person at all. Uh, actually, sent people to prison for drugs. So for him, this was new territory. And he said to me, if LSD is, uh, m might be helpful for diseases like dementia and also depression uh, could be treated with, uh, with uh, psychedelic compounds, why can't I, uh, he asked me, why can't I go to the pharmacy of our small town and just buy it if it's so helpful? So I, I said, I will research this for you. This will be my new book, and um, I, I, I did find actually very interesting occurrences and in the very early history of LSD when the Swiss pharmaceutical company who discovered it was very hopeful to turn it into a medicine. So I researched what what went wrong with LSD. Why did it? Why does it have such a bad reputation these days? Why did it become illegal in the first place? And can it actually help us now, or is it dangerous and should be forbidden? Yeah, I, it, it's certainly potent. I, I have taken LSD uh, uh, multiple times in my life. It's been it's been a lot of years since then, but uh, it's potent stuff, and and it, it it's transformational stuff too. Um, what what do you th it, talk about Nazi Germany and the CIA? <laughs> how, do, how, do the, how do these things get into there? Yeah, this is a curious story actually. While I was in the archives of Novartis Pharmaceutical company who swallowed Sandos, the inventor of, uh, inventors of LSD. Uh, mm -hmm. I found uh, interesting um, uh, documents that led uh, from the CEO, the Swiss CEO, Arthur Stoll of Sandos in the, in the mid forties to Richard Kuhn, who was the leading Nazi biochemist, because these two men had actually been friends and they had shared information. And then when Sandos discovered LSD and they actually had no idea what it was, it was we're talking about Albert, mind, Albert Hoffman here, right? Well, Albert Hoffman is the chemist who discovers and Stoll is his boss. So his boss basically called uh -huh. the shot okay. what the company would do with it. That was mm. that, that no one's actually ever examined that CEO because he's, he's the crucial guy. I mean, he didn't discover LSD, but he had it on his hands. And they, they, they actually formed a tripping room uh, within the, the company in, in the mid-40s where employees could go in and take LSD and no one knew anything about it, and the, the the employees just said the things. I read all the reports; like they like they were amazed how good they felt. They they could think about their life very clearly. They looked outside the window and admired the beauty of the clouds. Like they were actually tripping, but everyone had a good experience. And people who were a little bit down or had no energy suddenly had were revived. And so Sandos thought that this was this was like a, this was a game changer maybe for mental health because at the time there were no antidepressants, antipsychotics, this all didn't exist. So LSD was like mm -hmm. the first medicine that would actually heal people's minds. And he discussed this with Richard Kuhn on the German side, kind of naively, but Richard Kuhn, because they had been friends since the twenties. I mean, there's a Swiss guy and a German guy, they're friends, they, they're sharing information. So Stoll tells them we have this powerful thing that works on the mind. We don't know yet how it works and what we could do with this. And Richard Kuhn, who was, you know, working for Nazi Germany, developing uh, nerve gases. And I mean, he was a leading biochemist for Hitler. And one of his jobs was also to think about a so-called truth drug. This was a secret program of the Nazis. Can we find a drug with which we can improve our interrogation technique? Mm -hmm. So Kuhn thought maybe this is the LSD, maybe LSD, maybe this is it. So 
The Nazis, the SS, made tests at the concentration camp of Dachau, giving inmates LSD and mescaline, doing uh, human experiments, basically, without telling these inmates, these prisoners, we're giving you something now. They just drank a cup of coffee, but there was LSD or mescaline in it, so they started tripping. And so these, these, these experiments fell into the hands of the American military when they liberated Germany and the Dachau concentration camp. Mm. And the American, the American military got very interested in it because, you know, if this is a new type of weapon, maybe this LSD, we should maybe use it in the Cold War, which was then starting. So they let, uh, they let the SS experiments it be evaluated by a Harvard professor who was an expert in drugs. And he wrote back, yeah, maybe this could be a good weapon. Maybe we could you know, attack a Soviet battleship, kind of poison, or, you know, infuse their water supply with LSD. They would all be tripping. They couldn't fight anymore. So these were mm. this kind of uh, this this kind of thinking led then to the CIA developing LSD as a potential weapon. So the dream of Sanders, the company, to turn it into a medicine was early on uh, blocked. Uh, by, you know, this, I, I think, naive communication that the CEO had with the Nazi biochemist. So you That's can trace that, that communication all the way then back into the United States. That's amazing. Back in the 60s, a friend of mine was uh, going to MIT, and he got sucked into the CIA, uh, without realizing it, um, into the CIA LSD experiments and, and uh, was given LSD without his consent. Um, and that Whoa. was not a good experience. Um, would, was well, it, it, can, it can't be, you know, it's such a powerful substance. You cannot give it to someone without, you know, telling that person. It's yeah. a cruel oh, experiment. Yeah, it, it really was. Uh, I think he's still wounded by it. Um, I, oh. I, I'm wondering, you, you mentioned that uh, there was uh, an assertion that LSD could be therapeutic for dementia or Alzheimer's. Has that been followed up? Is that true? Well, that's what the startup companies worldwide are now trying to investigate and mm -hmm. examine. And slowly, the laws are softening, and it's easy more. It's easier than like 20 years ago or 10 years ago to make these clinical tests, but it's still not so easy. You have to, you know, fill in a lot of paperwork and to get permission to work with these substances because they're still controlled substances. That is kind of the catch-22 with the psychedelics when Nixon. Uh, proclaimed the war on drugs in the 60s and made also uh, LSD and, and mushroom psilocybin illegal. From that moment on, it was even illegal to examine whether it is dangerous. They, they were so dangerous, you couldn't even examine whether that's true. And now, I mean, the findings are, are pretty clear that um, psychedelic compounds, especially LSD, enhances so-called neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. Neuroplasticity is the ability of the brain or the the behavior of the brain, you could say, to constantly uh, alter its shape. Basically, the brain is not a rigid thing in our in our in our skulls. It's it's, it's, it's co constantly reconnecting, reorganizing knowledge, and LSD kind of stimulates that process. Also, LSD works against neuroinflammation, and neuroinflammation is the chief cause for dementia. Hmm. So it looks like that these compounds that the government told us uh, are too dangerous for us to use might actually be a brain food, a very beneficial. And this is now being examined. And for sure, psychedelic medicines will come onto the market, but it will take another 10, maybe even 20 years. But companies are working on this right right now. This is a, this is a billion dollar market, obviously. Sure. Yeah, we're talking with Norman Oler. He's the author of a new book, Tripped, Nazi Germany, the CIA, and the Dawn of the Psychedelic Age. You have a chapter, uh, LSD JFK. Tell me about that. I mean, it's a fact that um, JFK had a girlfriend, and her name was Mary Pincho. Uh, she was in the White House. She was seen by White House staff smoking weed with the president. Um, that's, there, there's documents for that. It's, there's also, it's also a fact that she, in uh, the spring of 1963, visited uh, Timothy Leary, who was a, had been a professor at Harvard and who was like the LSD uh, guru, basically. Yeah. He, he thought everyone should take LSD yeah. and the I world would become Leary. better, which, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, he, he gets visited by Pinchot, and Pinchot says to him, I have a very influential friend, and he wants to try LSD. And uh, can you give us some? Because it, you know, can it's not so easy to get it, mm -hmm. especially good material, I suppose, at the time. So uh, Leary gave her LSD, but then there's no record that she actually took it with uh, JFK in the White House. Mm -hmm. um, 
he had it in the White House with him. But, you know, you, you, you just pop it in your mouth and you've taken it. Like, no one needs to see you. And, right. and, and you would, no one would actually notice, like, security wouldn't notice if the president was high on LSD. So it's possible that he was on LSD. What is, what is a fact, again, is that a few weeks after this encounter between Pinchot and Leary, when she received the LSD for her influential friend, Kennedy gave his so-called um, peace speech at the American University. Mm. And in this speech, which you can find uh, easily on YouTube, for example, um, he speaks completely different than before. Before that, uh, Kennedy was actually kind of hawkish. Like, he was mm -hmm. a Cold War guy. He was a traditional guy. And he thought, you know, we have a problem with the Soviet Union. There's an arms race. There's a reason for it. We need to, you know, be able to you know, make them be, be afraid of us. And, you know, the whole arms race thing that he was you know, completely going with it. And so it's also, you know, big industry, big American industry, big global industry. But this peace speech, which I encourage everyone to have a look at uh, online, he suddenly speaks like a hippie. Like he says, yep. we're all on this, we're all the same on this planet. We have the same interests. We have children. We want to, we want to take care of the children. And this is ridiculous that we actually compete with the East. We should work together. Like it's it's kind of, it's it's a funny speech. It's a good speech, you know. You you, oh, yeah. you you you'd be amazed by his ideas. Actually, he had a complete turnaround of of mind. And was that influenced by the LSD that he took in the White House? It's pure speculation. It's possible. I, I mean, it wouldn't be surprising. But maybe also, you know, just the the love affair with Pinchot, you know, made him, you know changed him it's, it's awesome or maybe just the be. weed he smoked with her yeah but um it is, a, it is it's an amazing. interesting it is an interesting you know and then if you think it and is. then obviously a few months later he gets shot in the head that yeah. had these peaceful sadly. thoughts so sadly norman i gotta wrap yeah, it up here i'm sorry we're out of time but tripped is the book norman no problem o-h-l-e-r is the author norman thanks so much for dropping by it was a pleasure. Have a good... This uh, is the Tom Hartman Program. Thank you very much, Norman. Great great talking sure. with you. And thank you. We'll be right back with more of the news of the day and your calls. Right after this. <laughs>